10 days and more than 500 dead bodies ago, as Western leaders sent out warm Ramadan greetings insisting that Islam's holiest month is a time of peace, love, and teddy bears, I once again pointed out the obvious, namely that since Islam's most trusted sources command Muslims to violently subjugate non-Muslims, Focusing more intently on Islam during Ramadan will lead to an increase in terrorist attacks, which means that we should all prepare ourselves for a Ramadan bombathon. It would be rude of me to say I told you so, so I won't say it. I'll let Will Smith say it for me. You know, somehow, I told you so just doesn't quite say it. Now, I'm not sure what's sadder and more pathetic after a terrorist attack. All of the well-meaning but misguided morons who rush to defend Islam from criticism, or all of the pusillanimous politicians who pretend that they have a plan for dealing with terrorism so that they can dupe enough frightened voters into putting them in charge of the safety of British men, women, and children. Let's start with the misguided morons. Since the attack yesterday, I've had about a dozen conversations that all went like this. Just so everyone knows, the London Bridge attack has nothing to do with Islam, because Islam condemns violence and terrorism. Actually, Muhammad said that the entire world would be dominated by Sharia, that he was commanded to fight people until they convert to Islam, and that the path to victory is terror. But you shouldn't judge an entire religion by the actions of a few people. Actually, I judge religions based on what they teach. That's why I told you what Islam teaches. But it doesn't teach that at all. Yes, it does. Here are the sources. You're taking those quotes out of context! No, I'm not. Here's the context. But there's violence in the Bible, too! Happy to discuss the Bible when it's relevant, but it has nothing to do with the attack that just took place. What about Westboro Baptist Church, then? A church that protests soldiers' funerals? How's that supposed to help you defend your false and idiotic claim that Islam condemns violence and terrorism? You're obviously just a racist and a bigot, and there's no point in talking to racist bigots. These people eventually get to look back at their lives and realize that they couldn't think of anything better to do with their time than defend an ideology that calls for the violent subjugation of their friends and family, the systematic oppression of women, the execution of apostates, and so on. By definition, that makes them morons. What about the pusillanimous politicians? We've got politicians trying to sound like they're going to be tough on terror, even as their words conclusively demonstrate that they're only going to make things worse. For instance, British Prime Minister Theresa May, a woman who banned Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller from Great Britain for being too critical of Sharia, reassured frightened voters after the recent attacks by maintaining that the British government will finally confront the ideology of terrorists. Since an election's coming up, she even dropped the I-bomb. While the recent attacks are not connected by common networks, they are connected in one important sense. They are bound together by the single evil ideology of Islamist extremism that preaches hatred, sows division, and promotes sectarianism. She goes so far as to say that British values are superior to the values of radical preachers. It will only be defeated when we turn people's minds away from this violence and make them understand that our values, pluralistic British values, are superior to anything offered by the preachers and supporters of hate. Here we see the breakdown of the European multiculturalist fantasy. For years, Europeans have been spoon-fed the half-baked idea that no culture is better than any other culture, and therefore that it makes no sense for people to abandon their culture in favor of a better culture. But jihad has forced even British leaders to recognize that all cultures are not created equal. So, the British government is finally going to confront the ideology of jihadis and their preachers, right? Wrong, because Theresa May still doesn't know what that ideology is. 
It is an ideology that is a perversion of Islam and a perversion of the truth. Let me see if I understand. In the Quran, Allah says, fight those who do not believe in Allah. O prophets, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites and be unyielding to them. Surely Allah has bought of the believers their persons and their property for this, that they shall have the garden. They fight in Allah's way, so they slay and are slain. O you who believe, fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you and let them find in you hardness. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those who are with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful among themselves. In the Hadith, Muhammad declares, I have been commanded to fight the people until they bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and believe in me and that which I have brought. By him in whose hands my soul is, I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause, and then come back to life, and then get martyred, and then come back to life again, and then get martyred, and then come back to life again, and then get martyred. I have been made victorious with terror. Are jihad and martyrdom a perversion of Islam? If they are, then Islam was perverted from the very beginning. So, Theresa May still has no clue what she's confronting, and she's the one laying out the plan for dealing with something of which she's thoroughly ignorant. And what's her magnificent plan? Crack down on online extremism. We need to work with allied democratic governments to reach international agreements that regulate cyberspace to prevent the spread of extremist and terrorism planning. And we need to do everything we can at home to reduce the risks of extremism online. While it would be wonderful to do something about online radicalization, we have to wonder, who gets to define what qualifies as extremism? Will the governments that shut down online extremism also be the ones that define extremism? I'm asking because, if you recall, Theresa May banned Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller from Great Britain as extremists because they're outspoken critics of Sharia. Now, if they're extremists, then so am I. So if Theresa May wants governments to shut down online extremism, and we know it's not going to be limited to Islamist extremism, since that would be Islamophobic, and Theresa May views critics of Sharia as extremists, wouldn't critics of Sharia be caught in this online extremist roundup? Of course we would. And what happens when we're no longer allowed to criticize Islam? Islam spreads even more rapidly, leading to more jihad, more concerts bombed, more people run down with vans and trucks, more civilians slashed, more cartoonists murdered, more British girls gang raped, more police terrified to do anything about it, more threats, more intimidation, more of everything Theresa May is supposed to be making less of. To all my British friends out there, I say, you need to come up with a better plan than this and you need to come up with it quickly. If you don't, then you are, as the French say, les screwed. <laughs>